ladies and gentlemen, moving on tonight, we have the first of our mixed martial arts fights. Please welcome to the ring your first fighter, making his way to the blue corner. Please welcome from South Korea, Guy the Spartan Bomb Moon. And now we have South Korea's Gi Boom Moon, the man they call the Spartan, stepping in to the Chiraj Stadium here in Kuala Lumpur. You see our beautiful ring girls getting us started, putting up the flag of South Korea. Gi Boom Moon coming in, only 26 years old, only six fights on his record, four wins, two losses. Nice young prospect here looking to make that leap and take the next step towards greatness by moving on to the Abu Dhabi Warriors event. Folks, this is the Road to Abu Dhabi tournament as we kick things off in the featherweight division. That is 66 kilos or 145 pounds. Whoever wins this matchup will move on to face the winner of our other featherweight semifinal and they will battle at Abu Dhabi Warriors. Speaking of which, make sure that you stay tuned to AbuDhabiWarriors.com. It's AbuDhabi-Warriors.com and all of our social media to find out about our next big Abu Dhabi Warriors event. A press release is coming very soon, and we'll let you know when it's all going to go down in the UAE once again. Yibu Moon is in the ring. Focus, ready for his big tournament matchup. And ladies and gentlemen, your second fighter making his way to the red corner from Brazil. Please welcome Rodolfo the Nightmare Marquis. And now Rodolfo Marquez, the man they call the Nightmare. Ton of experience for this man. 29 fights in MMA, that's a pretty good number. 32 years old, 29 fights. 21 wins, seven losses, and one draw. Rodolfo Marquez fights out of Australia by way of Brazil. He's feeling himself tonight, getting psyched up, ready to make that walk like he has so many times. I've had the chance to call a few fights of Adolfo over the years in my time in Australia for a number of great organizations over there. Adolfo is one of those guys that has been a mainstay on that scene for quite a while. And a huge opportunity here to move on to Abu Dhabi Warriors and and to move on to greatness. You see he takes off that key and removes his black belt. Rodolfo Marquez, if he can get you to the ground, is very, very tough to deal with. Always dangerous with a submission. A nasty guillotine, great arm bar. He can work just about any body part and get the tap. So Kibu Moon is going to have his hands full. The air in this arena is pretty amazing here at the Trosh Stadium. And, you know, just the vibe that I've gotten here from Kuala Lumpur this is my first time. And a lot of people are talking about this event. It shows when you take a look at this crowd, every table is absolutely full. We have a ton of fans here in the arena as well as up into our bleachers. So, such a big market that is just waiting to really be picked open when you talk about Malaysia and the MMA scene. Adolfo Marquez ready to go to war inside the Abu Dhabi Ladies Warriors Ladies and gentlemen, ring. introducing these two Abu Dhabi Warriors once again. The fighter standing in the blue corner. 
He weighed in at 66 kilograms. He has a fight record of six wins with uh, two losses. He represents South Korea. He is Guy the Spartan Bomu. And standing across the ring in the red corner, this fighter weighs in at 66.1 kilograms. He has a fight record of 21 wins, seven losses with one draw. He represents Brazil. He is Adolfo the Nightmare Marquis. <laughs> Your referee in charge action is Garth Harriman. get us started here in this MMA rules three five minute rounds matchup in the road to Abu Dhabi in the featherweight division as you take a look at that tail of the tape experience most definitely going to Adolfo Marquez Adolfo Marquez is in the black shorts and in the tights is Guy Boom Moon started off quite busy here there was a little bit of discrepancy at the beginning of the fight there with Adolfo's wraps on his ankles uh, the uh, the uh, Malaysian judges and officials wondering if that was okay. It was checked out. There's nothing excessive about it, not, not excessively padded and not nothing excessively hard in there. So it, it isn't making a difference. Ooh, how it's about just Kibu Moon? Support. Nice combination there on the counter, and yeah. Marquez immediately puts him in the corner. It's always good to get that uh, referee and that official's perspective from you, Grant Waterman. You always <laughs> offer that up. Yeah. Many, many years you have been in the referee game. How many years have you uh, been it's handling official duties? In, uh, 18 years. Yeah, and that's that's refereeing mixed martial arts. So a couple uh, hundred fights, right? Uh, over 6,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wanted uh, to give you a chance to put that number out there. Yeah, I think it's uh, probably myself and Herb Dean are probably refereed the most MMA fights in the world. It's pretty um, amazing. It really is. I'm making way now for some of these young pups coming up. <laughs> but uh, they're pummeling away in that corner. Hodalfo, you know. Well, we, when you're used to fighting in a cage as well, I mean, it makes things a lot different when you're dealing with a ring and immediately going to the corner to kind of get that leverage and to apply that sort of cage work that they're used to doing. And He's looking for a leg. He's, he's looking for the South Korean fighter to lift the leg up, throw in a knee. He's going to catch it, I think, and look to pick him up and take him down. Marquez definitely has the advantage when it goes to the ground. He is a black belt, has a ton of submissions on his record, nice but he bit. also has nice hands as well. Yeah, he looks very tidy and rangy when he, when he throws his shots. But there where he throws a kick, he can be a bit sloppy. And Ooh, nice. Nice setup there for the, for the right jab. And here we go, Marquez back into the corner with Guy Boom Moon, and Guy Boom yeah. Moon just having a hard time really getting any sort of rhythm or any sort of offense started. Yeah, Boom Moon there, he threw a couple of shots, and uh, Marquez read it very well. But it's early doors, and these are five minute rounds, remember. Still in the corner, Adolfo Marquez working the ground game or trying to get him to the ground, Guy Boom Moon. Guy Boom Moon doing a great job of staying upright. Brazilians to, uh, to the Brazilians wrestling. Very good. He's turned him back into the corner. Then he goes for the takedown himself. Bit of a clinch vest here. Smaller gloves. Are we going to see a little trading here? Trading of the leather and a body kick. For Adolfo Marquez. Yeah, we, we have to uh, realize as well, this is the first time a lot of these um, Thais and Malaysians have seen mixed martial arts close up like this and fighting with these four ounce gloves is something they perhaps haven't seen before. Oh, beautiful body shot there by Boom Moon. But once again, that sets Marquez up as he tries to bring him down to the ground. As you see, Guy Boom Moon kind of using the ropes there to keep himself up and our referee staying on top of it, making sure that Boom Moon doesn't use the ropes for leverage. It's easy to do. I think it's a natural instinct to try to keep yourself up top there and 
to kind of use your elbow, put it yeah. on the rope. And I mean, a sensible fighter, you, you know, we often mention that they're fighting in a, in a ring today, not a cage, or they're fighting in a cage, not a ring. And we mentioned the differences, but a fighter who's got half a brain cell would have been training for the environment that he's going to fight in. Um, 100%. A guy like Marquez, uh, who's fought mostly on the Australian scene, you know, the cage hasn't been a big part of their uh, culture oh. traditionally. And here comes Gee Boom Moon, so oh. it's a big so shot, big game. Swinging, yeah. The Brazilian looks like he's tiring early. That, Ooh, that nice was, left hand, that was a nice hard left enough hand. to knock out the mouthpiece. But raises a smile from the Korean. You can only smile so long when a guy like that connects on your jaw and Marquez, Marquez pushes got the body back lock. against the ropes. He could put his, if he slips his left leg, but no. That's the last 10 of this first round of the first MMA fight on this fight card. He the shoots and tries to grab yeah. that double leg. Marquez has not been able to put not uh, his opponent keep him moving on the ground. That's right, not successful once during that round. Certainly more aggressive has been Marquez. He has been working for it. He's landed some good shots. Did yeah. he do enough, though, to take round number one? Yeah, and anybody wondering how, how these mixed martial arts fights are judged, you know, what the judges are looking for is the fighter who's using the most effective technique to do the most damage to his opponent to finish the fight by either way of stoppage due to punishment or knockout or submission. Well, so give an example then, because, you know, often you uh, you hear these MMA fans, MMA peers talking about how effective the takedown is and how it should be automatically oh, be given man. points, but at the same time, if you're not doing anything with the takedown, that's yeah, exactly how, how right. much emphasis do you put on it? Yeah, and that's, you know, that's one of my little pet hates uh, in mixed martial arts scoring. And uh, even corners, you know, they're saying, get the takedown, get the takedown, you know, it, it can, it can look like you're getting busy, but if you take your opponent down and you end up in your opponent's guard and your opponent is a submission specialist, who's got the advantage? You've sure. taken yourself into a bad position. Um, so does that takedown count in a positive way? Uh, it's a very, it's it, very interesting debate, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. And, uh, and I'm sure an interesting debate uh, among officials and judges. And here we go, round number two gets started here. Five more minutes in this battle. Who's gonna use the momentum? Gee Boom Moon coming out here, House of Fire, nice kick to the body. And he knows, Gee Boom Moon knows his opponent's game plan. Oh, oh beautiful he's transition, back. he's on the back. Is he up a little bit too high though? Is he gonna be able to get underneath that chin? Well, he needs to get his right hook in. Boy, that was a quick move, wasn't it? That was Lightning very, quick. very slick. Now puts himself in a compromising position as Gibu Moon gets out, separates, and lands a right hand. You see, that was a lovely bit of technical mixed martial arts there. He oh, hits. how quick was that? Another. Uh, Do you know? Well, he knows he can get it now. He did it yeah. the first time, and he just did it again pretty effortlessly. And the Brazilian, now he's on the back of Gibu The Brazilian Moon. knocked his mouth guard out there again. Um, I mean, okay. Could Waiting have been, for an it opportunity could have been Things too, have stalled out for a second. Could have been two great shots, but your mouthpiece shouldn't really fly out like that at this level. The referee will wait for a, uh, a, a lull in the action or an opportunity to replace that gum shield, but he will not stop the action at this point, which could risk taking the advantage away from the wrong opponent. The wrong fighter. Nice clinch work here by Gi Boom Moon taking control of this round so far with just about three minutes left. And that was a big shot. Now Marquez with Boom Moon up against the ropes. What does he do with him though? Can he follow up with some nice strikes? Yeah, he, he, he looks um, a little bit bewildered. You, you see him going for his, uh, his cable grip around the back and then, then he thought about going for a single. He's wondering how, he, how he's going to get this, uh, this South Korean fighter to the canvas. The referee's still holding Gibong Moon's uh, gum shield. 
He doesn't want to get smacked in the chops without that in. We are about halfway through round number two as Marquez continues to grind and push for that takedown. Guy Boom Moon doing a great job of thwarting it. Awesome takedown defense for yep. the South Korean fighter. And the Brazilian's going to be, ex be expending an awful lot of energy keeping on going for these takedowns. And he's putting his neck in there just a little deep as Guy Boom Moon tries to get up and underneath that chin, unable to do so. But you got to watch yourself. That could be a big mistake. There we go. The gun shield back in. That's good to see. Two minutes left. Can Guy Boom Moon continue to pour it on and add some points to his total? And I think we've said this before, you know, the, the Brazilian obviously came in here with a game plan to take his opponent down and either apply some ground and pound or, or uh, some of his Brazilian black belt, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt techniques and go for a submission. But if, if plan A doesn't work, you need a plan B to switch nope, to. You're absolutely right. How often do we see it that there is no plan B? They just keep going at it. And that seems what we're, what we're doing here with yeah. Adolfo Marquez. I don't know that he really wants to stand with him. I think he's kind of had some problems standing with him. And I think that Boom Moon is the more effective striker. So I think he's just trying to do whatever he can to secure the round. And staying on top of your opponent like that definitely helps your chances. Yeah, I mean, neither fighter are, uh, are intentionally just trying to grind out a decision. And looking at the experience difference, you know, the, the records here. Oh, that was a that was a nice left hook there from the uh, Korean. Gets repaid with a straight left from from Adolfo. Kibu Moon only with six fights on his record compared to a guy like Marquez that has had 29. That was a nice kick. Expending a ton of energy is Adolfo Marquez. And even if he can get out of round number two unscathed, you got to wonder about round three. Once he gets a chance to sit down and relax and think about things, is he going to want to continue? Yeah, I'm surprised here. Yeah. Gibo Moon, it should be breaking away, pushing off, taking the center of the ring. He knows what, he, he knows what he's got to avoid. Shucking him off there is Guy Boom Moon, and that's the end of round number two. We'll go to a third and final round as the battle continues here in the road to Abu Dhabi in this featherweight matchup, 66 kilos. And a bit of a better showing here by Guy Boom Moon. But I think it's still Hodolfo Marquez that did a little bit yeah. more, got into pretty compromising situations where he had a chance to possibly finish his opponent. Many props to the grit of Guy Boom Moon, but yeah, Marquez. Marquez Mar is just a bit of a league above. Yeah. He's uh, fought a lot of tough, talented guys. He's, he's ahead on the judges' scorecards, I'm sure of that. But we have five more minutes. Five-minute round left. And All it takes is a fight. few seconds. And the South Korean there getting a very harsh talking to from his corner. Probably saying to him, look, you can win this round, you can win this fight, but you've got to get busy and you've got to work. Here we go. Gable Moon breathing. Third final round, who's going to move on? Big opportunity for both fighters to get a chance to move on to Abu Dhabi. Lucrative, big show feel, even bigger than this. How exciting is that, Grant, that one of these men is going to move on? Well, every single fighter we've experienced on this world tour of EFN and Abu Dhabi Warriors, they, they've got such a hunger to get to Abu Dhabi. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's such a good experience. It's a great experience. You know, these are world-class events. The Brazilians got uh, the Koreans back there. It's, you know, it's all experience, you know, and they're fighting on a world stage, on a world-class event. But I think they also know that to win 
uh, the final on such a prestigious event as Abu Dhabi Warriors will lead to bigger things. Um, it's a huge recognized stepping stone to perhaps the UFC Bellator. Without a doubt. And Marquez is able to drag or Marquez down on the ground. Kibu Moon able to drag Marquez down to the ground. And now oh, this is an interesting one. I'd like to see the referee just intervene with those ropes. Kibu Moon trying to do anything to bring his opponent down. Knee in the back of the thighs is Kibu Moon. That cannot feel good. What a tough little fight, two hungry fighters. Six years between them, Gipu Moon, the younger of the two, and definitely showed a little youthful exuberance here in round number three, pouring it on, not trying to leave any sort of doubts. Three minutes left, the Brazilian seems to be uh, up in the tempo here. Squaring off. Gibo Moon there. Halfway just, through round three. Just faking, faking that he was going to kick. Looking for a counter. We're possibly in a similar <laughs> a similar position as we were to, with the very first fight of the night. That, that some heavy shots there landing. Throwing a little bit harder we're, now. And trying to set up that takedown once again. Kibu Moon has done such a great job of not being taken down. In fact, he actually took the back of Marquez at one point. Yeah. So, and it makes you wonder how, uh, you know, if Marquez had been more successful with his takedowns, how effective he would have been on the ground if he could have controlled, controlled his opponent, got a great position, and worked his jiu-jitsu. It's a very, very good point with just two minutes to go in our third and final round. One of these men the will leg. move on to Abu Dhabi. He's got that single leg. He just wants to drop down a bit and spin to his left. He's going for a double. He's went for that double the entire matchup. Not really going for a single leg at all. Going right to the double. And Things are really starting to slow down for both fighters. Pretty worn out. Yeah, we've got a minute and a half left. He's oh, Brazilian, it's relentless. He's putting everything into that. And I mean, if you've never trained, grappled, or, or uh, fought MMA or wrestling, you just, you'd never be able to appreciate how tiring it is, how anaerobic and physical it is. Just wrestling with it with a, an opponent like this under a minute left in our third round Gi boom moon up against the corner and now marquez is in the corner let's see if boom moon can do anything with it or if it's just going to be a clinch fest definitely want to put a stamp on it you want to put a guarantee on it when you finish up the fight and right now Adolfo Marquez is just doing a little bit too much. And Gibo Moon has slowed down considerably. Now he jumps Brazilian's on the got, back. He's got both hooks in. He's still got time to finish this, but he's got to be quick. Can he finish the fight? He's coming up to the last 10 seconds. Having a hard time putting this young man away is Adolfo the Nightmare Marquez. <laughs> Heavy shots. Big shot, big shots, and that's it. We're stopping the fight. Gregory Gar steps in here, and that is the end of it. He's going to wave it off. TKO to strikes. Wow. That must have been about one second to go before the end of the round. Quite the W there for Adolfo Marquez. Once he got on the back, that was all she rode. A very, very convincing victory for Marquez, who will now move on to a future Abu Dhabi Warriors event. Going to be amazing. Let's take a look at that replay. Just one of the great combinations.
Ibu Moon tried his best to, to take the back and do some sort of work. But Marquez, the experience certainly helped. Ibu Moon stayed in the fight. The Spartan, no doubt, went down on his shield. What a great finish here for Hidalfo, the Nightmare Marquez. It appears that we have an official decision. And once we can bring the fighters to the center of the ring, that's where they're going right now. We'll get our official Ladies decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three intense rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to the judges' scorecards, and we have a split decision in favor of your winner. From Brazil, Adolfo the Nightmare Marquis. Well, he must have made it to the bell there. I guess he made it to the end of the round, but he's gonna win a split decision. I thought the fight was waved off, and apparently I was wrong. It appeared that he waved it off, that he had just taken too much damage, but it did make it to the bell. We get the decision victory for Hidalfo Marquez, so either way, Marquez gets the victory, and rightfully so. He'll move on to a future Abu Dhabi Warriors event, and we can't wait to see that man back. We got more to come here from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, EFNA, and the road to Abu Dhabi.